Hi, my name is Amod Singhal. I'm an IT consultant who enjoys making complex technical material easy to understand. In this tutorial, I'll explain how SQL table joins work. This is something you must know, especially when your joins fail to produce the results you expected. Joins are needed for multi-table queries. A solid understanding of how joins work is a must for anyone working with SQL queries. This tutorial is restricted to understanding the logical mechanics of SQL join execution for joining two tables. Other tutorials will build on this understanding to cover topics such as the practical use of SQL joins, joining three or more tables, and whether to specify filters in joins on or in selects where clause, and so on. There are three fundamental types of join in SQL, cross, inner, and outer. Cross join executes a single logical phase, the Cartesian product. Inner join adds a second logical phase, filter rows using the on criteria. Finally, outer join adds a third computation phase, which adds outer rows from the preserved table. I'll explain each of these using example. I'll use two simple tables to explain the different joins. Let's take a look at the data. The customer's table has two columns, customer ID and customer name. It has three customers with IDs A, B, and C, Amy, Bob, and Cindy. The rewards table has three columns, transaction ID, customer ID, and points, which are the reward points earned by the customer. As you can see, customer Amy has two reward transactions with transaction IDs 101 and 102. The other two customers in the customers table do not have any transactions at all in the rewards table. So let's begin. The first example is cross join. The select statement shown here computes a Cartesian product between the customers and rewards tables. Cross join is computed in a single phase. Cross join pairs each row from one table with every row of the other table. Here we start by pairing all rows of the rewards table with the first row of the customers table. Then all rows of the rewards table are paired with each of the remaining rows of the customers table. Of course, the database engine can perform the computations in any order, but the end result must be logically the same. Each of the three rows in the customers table is paired with each of the four rows in the rewards table giving 12 rows in the result as shown. The second example is inner join, which filters on matching customer IDs in the customers and reward tables. Inner join computation starts where the cross join ends. Inner join then executes the filter condition specified in the on clause. In this example, we filter out all rows from the previous cross joint phase, for which the customer ID in the customers table does not equal that in the rewards table. These rows are shown in gray. Once the gray rows are filtered out, the final result contains the two rows as shown. Before going on to examples of outer join, let's understand outer join terminology using the left outer join example shown here. Left and right are the positions of the table names in the select statement as you read it from left to right. In the example shown, customers is the left table 
while rewards is the right table. Since this is a left join, the customer's table is preserved. Preserved means all rows of that table must be in the result. Outer row fields from the non-preserved table, the rewards table will be null filled. The third example is the left outer join we just saw. The outer join computation phase starts where the inner join ends. Outer join takes the result set from the previous inner join phase and adds rows from the preserved table. In this example, the customer's table is preserved. We can see that of the three rows in the customer's table, the row for customer ID A is already part of the result. Hence, the two remaining rows for customer IDs B and C are added in. For these outer rows, the data values for the rewards table columns are set to null. The fourth example, right outer join is very similar to left outer join. Of course, here the right table, namely the rewards table is preserved. Once again, we start with the result set of the previous inner join phase. Then we add in the missing rows from the preserved rewards table. As you can see, the result set already contains rewards table rows for transaction IDs 101 and 102. So, we add in the two remaining rows for transaction IDs 222 and 333. The corresponding column values for the customer's table are set to null for these outer rows. The fifth and final example is full outer join. Here, both left and right tables are preserved. As before, we start with the result set of the previous inner join phase. Then we add in the missing rows from the left table, followed by the missing rows from the right table. Some points to note. Inner join is the default, and so keyword inner is optional. Keyword outer is also optional. Left join preserves the left table, right join preserves the right table, and full join preserves both tables. To recap, there are four takeaways. First, there are three basic join types cross, inner, and outer. Second, cross join is computed in a single logical phase, the Cartesian product. Third, inner join adds a second logical phase, filter the rows using the on criteria. And finally, fourth, outer join adds a third logical phase, which is to add outer rows from the preserved table or table. It's now time to test your understanding. Here is the problem. So this is a little bit different. The data is the same. It is still a right join, except instead of the equality condition in the on clause, we now have a less than condition. I suggest you pause the video here to work out the answer on your own before looking at the solution on the next slide. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that before I click to go to the next slide. And here's the answer. Does your answer match the one shown here? Don't worry if the order in which the rows are listed differs from yours, because the SQL engine can list the rows in any order it chooses. 
So, if your answer matches, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. You understand how joins work. If you didn't get the correct answer, don't despair. Go through the tutorial again, pausing along the way as needed, so you get a complete understanding of the material. Good luck! And that ends this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and look forward to your feedback and comments. Thank you.